I'm complaining. I'm complaining right now because Look I like don't have a certain hair dry shampoo. Little known secret about Addison <laughs> is she loves coconut. She oh, loves I do. Everything. I do. Coconut. She loves everything. I have coconut, coconut she, issues. She has a coconut fetish. <laughs> Well, like maybe not like it might not be at the extreme of fetish level. You're yet. gonna be on a date, and the guy will do you have have watch a, this particular episode. Maybe like, and he's gonna be like, "So, do you have anything to tell me?" I was gonna be like, "Yeah, I have this thing. I have this thing. It's a coconut fetish. It's a coconut fetish. Like, yeah, coconut. I already know about that. But do you have any other things? Yeah. No. So she has this coconut fetish. <laughs> I do. I love coconut. What can I she say? Likes, she likes coconut yogurt and coconut milk and coconut yep. candies. Coconut and water. Coconut water and, yeah, like coconut seltzer water. Coconut hair stuff. Yep. I made chicken last week and she was over oh for dinner. Oh, my goodness. It was so yummy. I made so a coconut yummy. curry chicken and she was like, oh, you knew I needed the coconut. And I was like, actually, I was just making a coconut Sometimes chicken. Sometimes you just need the I coconut. I don't have the coconut thing like you do. I love coconut. Just not at that level. I'm not that I level coconut. coconut. So, love coconut. so, but we were talking hair right before it, hitting this whole thing, and the and and I was like, yeah, my hair's this train wreck because I really need to shower. You know, blah blah blah. So I, I did this dry shampoo stuff yesterday and this morning, uh -huh. and then I'm showering after free spirit talks. I'm showering. So, everybody knows I will be clean by this afternoon sometime. <laughs> Some of us will be showered this morning. <laughs> but she was talking about how great my hair looked, and I said, yeah, the only problem with it is that it is this tapioca-based stuff, because it's this natural tapioca-based stuff. But they have this one, it's like roasted coconut um, dry shampoo. Here, I think mine coconut. right now is like the brown sugar or something like that. But My hair yeah. is coconut, obviously. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you that. This will be my birthday present next month. <laughs> Here's some shampoo. Go it's wash yourself. Shampoo. Go wash yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I I brought. Oh, I do have like a little. I maybe have a coconut thing with the bathroom because. Yeah, you bought that stuff. That, the, she does. She has I a do. coconut issue in the bathroom. I do because I found my daughter has this one shampoo and it that says a coconut in there. So, so I will yeah. be smelling like coconut later. Yeah. Um, but our free spare talks is not on coconut or no, it is on the spiritual message. Our spiritual message is being excuses, not on coconut. But no. much like coconut, that can get overused when you have a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> our spiritual messages can also get overused. <laughs> you can stretch that shit. You can extend it out. You can definitely use it as an excuse to truly <laughs> to truly actually support any bs that you have it going is. on it is. it is true i mean what so what we were doing we're late because we had to go get smoothies and i go get these green smoothies and we're out there and i was telling her about my little dilemma of this morning which i was sharing earlier on my live stream and it was just that i had gotten caught up in and just a moment where I had to, like, I refer to it as a six-year-old moment. I got caught up in this six-year-old, I want it my way, nobody understands, why does it always have to be hard, blah, blah, blah thing for all of two miles while driving. Because I had had a little moment with my ex. We'll just put it like that. And my thought in the midst of it was, well, maybe this is just the universe telling me, boom. I shouldn't do this appointment. I shouldn't, shouldn't go do this. Do that. I shouldn't, shouldn't do, that. do that. Right. Because I have some things that I could that I could reschedule or move around and I could take away from self and then take care of everything else that is being set, you know, in front of me, all these everybody else's needs and everything. So maybe the universe is telling me that I shouldn't take care of me and that I should not be self serving at all today. Instead I should make this like like Friday and Saturday and Sunday, probably a lot more of that because that was like very family oriented day. I should just go ahead and just take care of everybody else and, and just put all that. So I could have looked at it as though the universe spirit was saying this. You could have used that as a total 
ego excuse, excuse to not do the things that I actually need to do for my self care, for my business, for my homestead, all that kind of stuff. I could easily just move that over and just go, well, the signs are this. this. And there's, I, I remember years ago, I was doing, um, well, actually, how I got to Texas was all sign related. Mm -hmm. I was having dreams. I mean, even the clouds were turning into arrows, and the arrows that were attached to other clouds that said Texas on there. And, you know, like, and I remember this one dream. I was standing on one side of a dirt road, and there was this lady on the other side of the dirt road with a dog, and I walked across the street. And I looked at her, and she says, yep, it's Texas on this side, too. And, I mean, like, everything was Texas in my dreams, and I had no idea why everything was Texas, and I ended up moving to Texas. So the signs really were pointing. But here's the thing. When we have signs, it's like, so you're driving down the road, you say, I want to go to the Bahamas. I want to go to the Bahamas. If I, if I am meant to go to the Bahamas, I want to see a 77 in the next two miles before I get to my house. Right. Like, like, so God, instead, angel, so instead of you seeing a 77, instead you pass down the road and there's a great big billboard with a cruise ship on it that says Bahamas. Is that a sign for the universe that you should go to the Bahamas? Or not? She's like, it's a sign, it's a sign, let's go to the Bahamas. <laughs> Everything's a sign to go on vacation. Come on now. This is me and you talking. We love to travel. No, but it, that's not the sign you asked for. And I mean, in truth, I, I actually would take that as a sign, but if you are going. I, yeah, I actually would probably take that one as a side of like, yes, like I'm meant to go to the Bahamas, but that's also manifesting just a sign. It's not true sign. If you go, I'm going to, you know, like, if, shoot, when I play slug bug, as you know, I play slug bug. And when I get really, really you into, get into it, it, she gets into it. I don't play with her. <laughs> when I get really, she really into people. it, what? Only because there's a lot of slug bugs around when I put my mind to it. Yes. All of a sudden they appear out of everywhere. So does that mean that the universe is supporting my, like, yes, go slug somebody, Kendall? Or is it just that I have my eyes open now for every slug bug You're that looking. is actually there? Am I looking for it? You're looking. I'm looking for it. And I think that that's the, I mean, the true tale here of our spiritual messages are, are our excuses. Is that no matter what, no matter what, if you're really not wanting to do something, you could be like, you can turn anything into a spiritual message. And it's just like, if you read the Bible, there's a story to support anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's, there's a lot of times that we, we do, we met, we, especially, I see it more, less, le, no, ugh, I can't talk. I don't see it as much in like my clients when they're wanting something as I see when they're like, I really don't want to do this. I real, I'm not certain about this. They're putting out all this negative energy and then they're like, oh, well see, I just saw this number and that just, that means that I just shouldn't do it. Or, you know, I got a call and somebody asked me to do something, like somebody asked me to do something. So, you know, that's just the universe telling me I shouldn't do this, that this isn't meant for me. I had, oh, the other last week. Let's go on this really hot date. It was gonna be hot. <laughs> we were gonna have an amazing, I'm not gonna go there, but I won't go into detail. But, like I was gonna have this amazing date. We were so gonna have a romantic, like hot, see totsy kind of evening. I was, I was gonna <laughs> totally get lucky. I was gonna make sure I got lucky. And, the fact is, I went, so then something happened with my body, my physical body, <laughs> say my physical body, and I was like, this is not going to work. And then I also wasn't feeling, I ended up not feeling very good that day, but I was like, well, this is just a, I had a moment of like using it as an excuse. Well, this is a sign that this, I should just not. This relationship. This relationship's not going to work. This, this is, is like, probably God telling me that the relationship's not going to work. Not going to work. I should never work. have sex ever again. <laughs> oh my. Slow the horses down. Let's just slow down here. 
our physical body. Or maybe you're just stressed. <laughs> you're just stressed. <laughs> so yeah. is that as a way to put out there? Do I want to know? Is that a... I'm not going to say that. <laughs> That's an interesting little meme that just popped up. No, don't click on it. <laughs> Look, I want to touch. No, don't touch, butt. Don't, don't touch the butt. Don't touch the butt. Literally. Literally. Okay. <laughs> Literally. Okay. So we my, don't know what you're But the point is like <laughs> I could have used that physical moment instead of going, okay, so you were you're a little stressed, so so your body was doing this and actually looking up the spiritual meaning of what I was experiencing and going, Okay, like I get that. That is a true spiritual message. My body is giving me a message. But it's not a message of over here. It's a message of, okay, de-stress what some of the stuff I was dealing with. Deal with your stuff. Pause for a moment. Slow down. I mean, Now, if every time I went to go and have a date with this man, this was happening, then I would go. Because you've experienced that. And that is a spirit. That's another spiritual message of, like, do not go here. Stop trying. Like, don't do this. It doesn't matter how you have to bring up the it doesn't, dark and handsome professor. It doesn't matter how yummy it looks. You can't oh, have it. Oh, that man was a beautiful, beautiful man. I know, you tell the story. So funny and attractive and sweet. And I was just a no to him. I mean, I was a yes to him. My body was a no to him. Yeah, that was bad. That was really bad every single time. It was like three strikes and he was out. I just, I was so embarrassed I could not even, because I just had to like keep. <laughs> yeah. Looking our intimate, my body was like, no. Nope, this is not happening. This is not happening. I'm like, I really wonder what the heck my body knew that my brain and eyes and desire was not picking up on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the fact is, like, that I would say, yes, that that's a spiritual message. It's something that keeps coming to you. You're not going, I'm looking for this. Oh, yeah. That was just something that keep, kept coming to you. And I think that is the where we can get tricky. It's like we're looking for reasons why something won't work. If we're looking for ways to get out of something, if that is where our mindset is, that's not a true asking. That's not a true surrendering and opening to your messages and just like seeing what comes and truly like letting go of the wheel, as Carrie Underwood would say. <laughs> like not, it's not a true like Jesus take the wheel here kind of moment. That's a, no, I'm going to make this be the way I want by by focusing in on finding every single number set or animal or whatever your spiritual message kind of is. A few years ago, I was driving back from my office to my house and I had a very emotional pressing thing that was, I was, was happening in my life. And I was really, really caught up. It was definitely, it was a heart-based heart issue, romantic-based. And I, I, something inside of me was just like, okay, maybe I need to go face this person. Maybe I need to just go do this. This is what I need to do. So I make it just a little bit of distance home when I go, all right, I'm going to turn, because since I have this really coming up inside of me right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn around and I'm going to head that direction to this person's office because they should be free at this time, blah, 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 blah. And I'm driving, so I have this conversation with God, as I like to call these moments. I'm like, okay, Lord. If I'm supposed to go there, we have about 20 minutes before I get there, this distance, and I want to see, and I'm a big seven person, I was like, so I want to see either, I gave God like two options too. I was like, okay, we're gonna make, we're gonna open up. Cause you knew what you wanted. Well, You're... I really like, I really need to like, I want, I want closure. I want, you know, like I want face to face. So what I did was I was like, you can either, I can, you can either send me 444 or 777. Either one of these, if I see them at least twice in the next 20 minutes before I get to this street to turn on, then I'll know that it's a go ahead. So I was like, okay, that's good. Like these are numbers I see all the time too. So I was like, so I'm pretty like sealing the deal here. I'm picking on numbers that I see all the time. And I and those are my go ahead numbers. So I did, I went ahead and said that and I keep take off driving. And of course I forget that I am supposed to be remaining present to see these numbers. So I get caught up in fear and worry and conversation play out in my head. And I'm working the whole storyline, like all sides of it and possibilities, I'm thinking through, and I'm just driving, 
of which I don't see any numbers, zero numbers. I don't see any numbers. And then I get to the street to turn on and I pull into a parking lot and I'm like, oh man, I totally blanked. Man, I really messed up on this. Like now I don't know what to do because <laughs> I didn't see any numbers. Maybe that's a sign in itself that I should, I don't know what to do. Like, okay. I was like, okay, God, okay. I still have like, because I was going to the office, so I was like, there's still some weaving around to do here. I was like, all I need is I just need one like very, very clear sign. And so just one of those numbers to appear between here and the time I get to the, the to the parking lot of the office building. I was like, okay, this way. Around the corner, and I make it maybe two blocks down the street. I don't know this. When all of a sudden, I come up on the whole road being torn apart. And there's nothing but orange cones sitting everywhere and a gaping hole in the middle of the road then that was my path to get to where i was trying to go and there's a great big sign that says detour and it's pointing the opposite direction god saying whoa 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 and i was like that's not a good sign and that's not a good sign like what the heck what's what's that what's that about so i went ahead and i was like but i'm determined like i gotta see the numbers for you in order for me to to go or not i have to see numbers so I was just like, I'm gonna keep driving until I see these numbers. And if I don't see any numbers by the time I get to the parking lot, then I'll just keep driving and I won't, I won't stop. I didn't listen to myself. But <laughs> I went ahead and I drove all the way over there of which there was no cars in the parking lot. Nobody was there at the office building. And I was like, so what the heck? Like what, what was that detour about there, Lord? You know, and I'll never forget because I came out, I did a loop-de-loop in the parking lot and I came back out and I have no idea where this humongous stick came from, but there was all of a sudden a humongous stick stuck underneath my car. And my car sounded like it was falling apart. It was all <laughs> like that. Scared me to death. I stopped the car and it's like, it's like 1130 at night. I stopped the car and I get out and I throw myself on the asphalt to look at the car to see. And I'm like trying to get this stick out because it was stuck up in the engine part of my car. And I was laying there and I'm going, Look at how stuck you are on you having it your way, on you going your direction, and this uh, inside. So I did not get the signs that no, I didn't. asked for. And you were pissed because you called me right after that <laughs> on your way home. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you'll listen to my stupid but over here. Like, this is what I did. <laughs> you got to talk me through this. Talk me down. Talk me down. Talk me down. <laughs> Tell me not to go to the house. Talk me down. <laughs> Tell me. Tell Talk me, me down. Don't let me go to the house. I guess I really want to go to the house right now. Like, you almost drove into a big gaping hole. Don't go to the house. Yeah, I almost drove into a hole. Got stuck by a humongous tree branch that somehow ended up running my car. I don't know where that came from. But you were determined. The point is, is that I could have uh, over, I was trying to make something out of, what was coming and to the point that I was just, I was bulldozing my way to where I wanted to get the answer that I wanted to, to do what, to do it my way. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting other signs that at least I did slow down and go, okay, you need to, you need to take a detour. You need to pause. You need to relax here. Look, you are getting yourself caught up yeah. on this. You are being ridiculous about this stuff. And I have no idea, like if I had decided to just go over to his house, who knows what would have happened in that moment. It probably wouldn't have been good. It probably wouldn't have been good. It probably would not have been no. good in that moment. So yeah, so I mean, but we can like force signs to go different ways. We can avoid things. And that's the whole thing. It's like, who knows how many numbers or a lack of numbers there really were that that night i direct, i asked for a clear direct message to come through mm -hmm. and then i got caught up in my own storyline in my head and became unpresent so who knows what was there but if i had actually been following my signs i would not have even gone because i didn't see any numbers i didn't follow the signs but i did get the detour i did get the caught up maybe i needed to go to to get those signs well yeah and I think also we can sometimes use I think we use resistance any resistance though at the same time especially if we want like if it's like 
And I'm thinking like in our business, in our relationships, anything that's like any resistance, I'm like, oh, see, God just doesn't want me to have it. And that's just giving up. That's just you not setting your intention, you not. So I think it can easily, I think when we say like spiritual messages are excuses, it's not that they're, they have to be excuses, but you can make anything a spiritual message. You know, me reading eat better on this this thing could be a sign but oh well everybody gets the same cup from tropical cat you know what i mean like that could be a sign like eat better eat better Ashton. like you know or it could just be like that's the cup <sighs> right and you've got the cup and our, our messages really are more about our thoughts manifesting and guiding us and us looking for what we are focusing on instead of anything else. I, I mean, and I believe in angelic forces yes. and energy and, and signs and I symbols well. and everything. But I think that there is a level of extreme that, you know, there, there are things that come up and you go, how the heck is that even possible? Yes. That's like a real hardcore sign. And then there are the messages from our soul. That come up and that those are the ones that I really believe that they they just they feel there's like this, feel this different. it does they feel it feels different. different you just have almost this turning the shifting inside where it's like oh we're feeling alignment now it is the the hell yes to it instead of eh, I don't know or not making into it and then there's the ones that we're just thinking about something so much so now we're looking for it and much like me with slug bug, if I'm really looking for the bugs, you're gonna find them. Then they're everywhere. If I'm looking for bugs in yellow cars, then you know, then that's just it. And I happen to be good at that. You know, I'm like, it's just a game of presence, and I call it that. It's but my you game don't, of presence. You don't stop in the middle of slug bug and go, okay, I'm gonna tune into my soul right now. I'm gonna go is like, is this the bug for me? Is this the bug for me? <laughs> is it? Is this game? Should I, should I be playing this game right now? Is this so aligned? No, you're just going like, this is a fun game. I'm going to go with some fun. positive energy. And I'm going to manifest lots of bugs so I can beat, beat the crap out of my, my guy while I'm driving. Like, not really. But yes, really. <laughs> you know, and be playful. Oh. Like, Volkswagen dealership. <laughs> yes. It's like, ah. But you're not like tuning into your soul. I think that is the difference of like, when it is a true like spiritual message, like you know, and if you tune into your core, you're like, yeah, like, no, that was a message for me. That was like, you know it. And usually those messages will put, catch you out of nowhere. It's that moment where like the song comes on and you weren't tuning into the song and then all of a sudden you're like- Certain lyrics come in. You're like, why did the music just get louder? But the music actually, the volume didn't change, but it's like, this is a message for me. I need to hear this, something in this. Mm -hmm. You know, or the numbers just keep popping out and you weren't looking for them. You weren't asking for them. So it, I, I believe that there's that as well. Oh, yeah. It is a tuning. You can tell the difference by really just tuning into your core self. And then there is the translation of any message. <laughs> there is truly translation stuff that goes on. I mean, sometimes we just don't want to embrace what the translations are. And we want them to be what we want them to be. It's about our desire and our wanting instead of in, instead of the what the truth is. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's it's a barn around here and the I doors know. are wide open and the animals just come in. The animals? <laughs> You're calling your oldest son an animal. Did you see him? He's scratching at the door. No, the, scratching at the door. The dog. The <laughs> no, no, no. He's not an animal. He's home. It's his day off. Yes. And this is not his home. But he's here. Is that a spiritual message that you should? I don't know. <laughs> it's a spiritual message that it's time for mom to shower and to leave the house before the invasion of the animals come. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Run from your own house before all your children get there. It's true. 
No, but it is like looking at what you're, it really is like looking at, are you trying to force the spiritual messages or are you just allowing them to come to you? How are you, how, do you, how are you interpreting them? Because the fact okay, is anything can well, yeah. get. So last night, interestingly enough, I had a, is this really like a good spiritual message? And, and I was like, I'm really concerned now. <laughs> you really am. I'm concerned. And Jules, so my, my 16 year old and I, we, we have that pet sitting gig that we were doing yesterday for her bestie who's off on a trip with her dad. And we go to feed their grumpy little cancer infected chihuahua, poor little thing that was scared out of its mind last night. And it's about 10 minutes from here. So we get in the car at 11.30 last night and we drive over and we take care of the dog, give her her medicine the best we could. She didn't want to eat because she's just scared. So <laughs> she's a chihuahua, they don't eat her. They're always scared. It's like she was just scared. So we did that. We get back in the car and we're coming back home and we're going down a six lane road with a, a median in the middle and I see this shadow dart across the road in front of us, maybe three car lengths ahead. And it moved just fast enough. It really looked like there was a sh it was a shadow, but I knew it was an animal. And it was a bigger animal. So I, I looked at Jules and I said, what was that that just went across the street? And I like, and that's, so we're coming up and there's a light not far past where this animal went across. We slow down and it was a coyote standing on the side of the road. So this coyote had darted across the road, caught my attention. I followed it across, but I couldn't make out that it was a coyote because it's nighttime, lighting, fast. Normally, normally if a coyote runs across the road, they keep running. <laughs> they keep running. They're not typical to just stand and Hang go, out. let me stand here and wait until, you know, all the cars pass and, and just let, let me go watch the traffic. He made it across the road. He was happy he still had his life and he should have been carrying on with his business. Instead, he pauses just long enough for my car to get there. I'm slowing down, so he's standing there staring Ooh. out at the road, and we're slowing down, and I'm like, oh, that was a coyote. And I went, <sighs> coyotes. Oh, oh, oh. Me and coyotes. They are the pranksters, they are the jokesters, they are the ones to not be trusted. They are a sign that somebody in your midst is not what they are proclaiming to be. To not, you know, to be kind of a little conscientious, cautious yeah, about cool. relationship stuff that's going on. And it has been my experience over time that that normally relates to men with me. Um, <laughs> so, because I once almost hit two coyotes. They were chasing each other at nighttime, of course. And I was, luckily enough, I didn't hit the first coyote and I slowed down and the first coyote ran and then right behind the first coyote was another coyote and I was like, whoa, when do you ever see two coyotes you together? Don't. Because coyotes are not community packs. animals. They are in the, they, they are very much alone and when they're not wolves. Wolves are all about community. Coyotes are not. They are out there. They're all by themselves. So here are two coyotes together and I went, that's not a good thing. So I went, okay, there's two people in my life that are not exactly what I think they are. And and I almost got into an accident with these coyotes, and I came this close to a severe accident with these with both of those coyotes. Like <laughs> severe accident within a year of that particular incident, the two main men in my life, who I'm designating these coyotes to, both showed true colors, and both with six seven year relationships blow up and I look back at that and and I have other coyote stories like I was with my high school boy and I'm point making this point because here's signs for you a year a de over a decade ago now I was with my high school boyfriend and had come back together and we just had this like little intimacy moment where we were sharing and dreaming and everything and we were taking a walk in a park and we sat down on a log and we were looking at each other and Behind him came a coyote, come up, up right behind him, maybe four or five feet behind him is this coyote, and it's now looking at me, and I'm looking at it, and he looks at me, and my, my high school boyfriend looks at me, and he says, there's something behind me, isn't there? And I said, yeah, there's a coyote, don't move. <laughs> Stop, looks at me. And as soon as I just acknowledged its presence, he took off, he just walked away. 
he just walked away. And then we were out and we were walking around this little lake maybe 10 minutes later and there was, I'm pretty sure it was the same coyote, made its loop and went, was on the other side of the water and stopped and looked at us again. And he's like, is that the coyote you think? And I was like, yeah, I think that's the coyote. And I just was like, he wants you to know. I was like, so you see, if I fall back into, oh, this is about, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't fall into these ideas. So now I'm like, okay somebody coming in that's gonna like look one way <laughs> it's gonna like don't trust any sam it's like use your judgment don't get caught up on the desire of what you may want to manifest or want to create versus what's actually happening because a lot of the times how we use our spiritual signs as excuses is we get caught on the want and we miss all the red flags and we go, oh, but the spiritual signs told me this, told me this. So we can have the, the flags telling us to go this direction. And we can be like, no, this is it over here. And it's really is, it's the excuse because excuses are positive and negative. But there's not always like, I can't do yeah. this. It's, it could be, I want, I want to, to do, do this. this. And that's an excuse to do what you want to do and to disregard your better judgment, better ideas, what's very obviously the direction you should go in. So simple message, but complex message. Your bobcat. Yeah. And bobcats are adorable. Yeah. <laughs> you have lots of those stories. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm an animal person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, I need to look up. Um, I'm animal. more about numbers. <laughs> They're safer. You can't, you can't argue. I am about. You cannot I am argue with coyote though. animals. Well, what about that freaky, creepy thing that I saw that I still don't know? I Super Yeah, right? I don't. We don't talk about that. We don't say that word. It's an illegal word. What? I'm convinced I saw one. Yeah, it was weird. It was a very, very weird thing. It was not a coyote. It was not a bobcat. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> check in on your spiritual messages. Of if you're making good. excuses, if you're using them. And also to just not like grab onto it, just be like, oh, I got this, I saw this animal, so that is like, and like, you still can use your intelligent thought as well. You know, we have a lot of bunnies around here. Yeah, they're all over the place. They're everywhere. And just because there's 50,000 bunnies every day doesn't mean that we should be paying attention to all the bunny signs. The reason I bring up that I am like, oh, that's a coyote has a message there is because I don't okay. see coyotes all the time. I, I haven't seen a coyote since the two last ones I saw. There was a sign I saw yesterday. I have to go look that up. It was an important sign. It wasn't a bunny. Anything that you want to share? No. With the class? <laughs> no, because I don't know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to share it with the class until I know what it means. <laughs> wow. I shared mine from last night. I'm not trying I to share it. I shared my issues. Feel the pressure. No. Okay. Sorry, peer pressure. That's okay. It isn't working. So what do you have going on that you'd like to share? Oh. <laughs> so I am rerunning my instantly oh woman. I don't have a signature program, but if I was to choose any of my programs that were my signature program, this would be it. Because it just is like jam-packed with content. And I'm starting that next Monday, the 26th. It is going to be four days. Uh, spread out throughout the week. You're going to get all the last time I did the course. So you're going to get all those videos, all that training on top of the additional stuff. So I'm going to just give you some, some additional training, go deeper on everything that I went into last time. So yeah, join me if you are a lady. Men, sorry, you can't be an instantly orgasmic woman. So it's not a class for men to take. I remember the last learn. time you ran this. You had a bunch of men that wanted to they sign up. They all wanted to sign up. And I was like, to learn how no. to make their woman instantly That's orgasmic. my instant, that's my orgasm donor class. That is not my instantly orgasmic woman donor, or instantly orgasmic woman program. Okay. So this is the ladies only. Yeah, and it's online, so you don't have to come to the DFW area. Anybody can attend. Uh, you will have access to all of it for a lifetime, all of that. Same stuff that is true of all of my online courses and all of your online courses. Yep. Which 
I am have decided that my tantric practitionership certification course is going online. Mm -hmm. Is going online, and then we will have a great big close of in person in Costa Rica. This will make it more accessible um, and easy for everybody who is has shown interest and in everything in participating in this year's practitionership. Yeah, because you've gotten a huge amount of people. There's a lot of people, but then we have the holidays and we have all the stuff going on. And there's a lot of people that are not local to the Dallas area that have shown interest. So I want to make this as easy and smooth for everybody and be able to pack it full of also additional resources, which I was doing, but this will just make it very, very and We still get to go to easy. Costa Rica. And we still get to go to Costa Rica. So oh, that is, okay. so everybody who participates in this also has the opportunity to go to the Costa Rica retreat to get the mastery. Um, certification there which is going to be absolutely phenomenal so that is my announcement we'll make sure that we um, add links of course and everything to yeah. um, instantly orgasmic women in the tantric practitionership so that's all coming out and we both have spots open for our one-on-one -on -one coaching oh, yeah. so guess what we are clocking down the days of the decade we're about to enter a new decade so you want your Next decade to be expansive, I suggest you start now. Is that? I mean, that's... It is a little freaky. I wrote an article a few months back about just that, that, you know, it's not like we... This next transition point for us, this next new year, is also the end of the decade. And that so many no, times, So many people have not even caught up with that fact yet. So I guess, it's like, that is... It's a big... It's a big deal for a lot of people because that decade, I mean, like, what are the... What's the next decade going to be like for you? Do you want... Do you want this next decade to be like the last decade? Or do you want it to be bigger, better, you know, more insightful? Yeah. Do you want it to feel better? Because that's, I think, I mean, and I look at it as like, happiness. it's like eating or not to eat food or starving to go eat. No, keep, keep, get moving now before you get to a point of like, like now I'm like, now I'm in struggle. Don't wait until you're like in that like, desperation place to reach out for that's a really great analogy because you know it's like if you go to the grocery store hungry you spend a lot more money you, get stuff you buy you a don't... whole bunch of stuff that you don't need exactly. but you're absolutely starving so everything looks good to you you not your judgment is not very good in that moment you're just like ooh, 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 ooh. and then you have and you spend i bet you you spend at least a quarter to a third more if not more when you're hungry. And you get home and you're like, I don't... And then, you, and then you get home and then you're like... And then the next day you look at it and you're like, now that you're not hungry, you look at it and you're like, why did I buy all this junk? Why did I buy all this junk? And I didn't get the creamer I needed for my coffee. I and this, I didn't and get I this. That. And right. I, I, missed, I missed some of the important items because I was so caught up in my hunger. And yeah, and and growth is definitely just like that. I mean, you, except with growth, a lot of people don't realize how hungry they are. We're all hungry for growth. Until, until it gets really... Guess what? We're all human. We're all hungry for growth. If you're not hungry for growth, then you're just, you're not connecting with your soul. Yeah, you're not the end of story. at all. Yeah, that's very... That's end of story! You have, you have no freaking clue who you are. No freaking clue. If you do not have a hunger, a desire, then you are not. You don't know who you are. So you need coaching even more. <laughs> no, but we both are high. We are both still have some slots for yes. our one-on-one -on -one coaching. So take your poison <laughs> at fsmill.net or pleasure poison or kendallwilliams.com. <laughs> How about poisonous blonde, poisonous redhead? Yes. No, it's kendallwilliams.com. Kendallwilliams.com or addisonmill.net. Hi guys, we will see you in two weeks for another Free Spirit Talks.